Hey everyone, this is Kodajit and I'm back again today with another video about Blazor. In this video, we will learn how to debug Blazor WebAssembly projects and what can you do to make your coding life easier while debugging. So let's get started. Debugging is a very, very important concept in programming and the three primary missions of debugging is to first run your code to make sure it does what it should do. So when you've written a function or a method or a piece of code, you want to make sure that it actually does what you want it to do. Second, test your functions and methods. If you got a number of functions and methods that are coming together to get some work done, you need to make sure they return the correct value when you give them the data you need to input. The output must always be correct and debugging can help you ensure that. And thirdly, to solve bugs and issues. So if you got a problem and you need to fix that problem in your code, debugging is going to help make your job easier because you can exactly find out where the problem is and then try to fix it. Now we're talking about Blazor WebAssembly and if you remember my earlier videos from my earlier videos, Blazor WebAssembly is actually a technology that divides your web project into two parts. There's going to be a client side project and there's going to be a server side project. The server side project will supply the data and the client side project will do the presentation. So Blazor WebAssembly is actually a framework that works in the web browser and the separate part, the ASP.NET Core project runs in the background just communicating with the client project. So you gotta, you gotta debug these two projects separately. The client side project will run on the browser but Visual Studio has built a interface between the browser and your Visual Studio so it can automate the browser, control the browser and you can debug the browser code right inside of Visual Studio. Now this technology is not particularly new. It has been around a while uh, for Microsoft Internet Explorer earlier and now it works on Microsoft Edge 2 and also on Chrome. Now the backend project you're going to be debugging in Visual Studio just as you would debug a normal ASP.NET Core project. So let's get started and see how it will actually work. This is the code of an app that we are creating right now and you can see that we've got quite a few lines of code and debugging means we want to execute the portions of this code and monitor the execution to make sure that the code is working correctly. The most important concept that you will need to remember is a breakpoint and wherever in the code you place a breakpoint, the compiler will pause right over there and then let you continue manually. So if I want to, to debug this particular function, for example, I want to make sure that this line is working correctly. What I need to do is put a breakpoint right over here and then the compiler will pause execution at this line and from here on I can I can proceed manually. Now I'm going to put a breakpoint right on the first line. You can create a breakpoint by clicking on the black area, this band right near the line that you want to create the breakpoint on and you will see a red dot and the and the code will be highlighted in a different color. I have a theme which highlights it in red and now you know that your breakpoint is active. Now if I run the code it will hit the breakpoint. So let's see if that does it. The breakpoint is hit. The line is now highlighted in yellow and you can see there is a little arrow marker which tells you where the code is right now and I can now continue the execution of the code using the mouse icons over here. You got some options like step into, step over and step out. Let me briefly explain what each one does. So when you step into some code, you will go inside the function that you're currently on. So for example, right now I'm on the get home function. This line is the line that will execute the get home function. And if I use step into, the execution will go inside get home. And whatever initialization it needs to do, that will run of course. And now you can see that we are inside of get home. This is get home executing and I will be able to execute all parts of that function line by line, right? 
and I have continued to do that so from inside of get home we went into create request and now we are inside the create request function so as long as I will keep clicking step into it will go inside the execution of each line so if I step into user ID it will execute the user ID and it will tell me exactly how that runs so first it will be app state and then it will be user ID so you can go into the micro you can keep going deeper and deeper in your code and you will see exactly how things are working the second option is step over and what step over does is it will execute that line whatever function you have there no matter how much code is in that function it will just all execute in one go and you will go to the next line right on this in this function itself so example when I click this it's not going to go into app state it's not going to go into org ID it's going to go to the next line right inside this function so this way you can just stick to the function that you're currently in see all the work that you're doing here without going deeper and finally we have step out so if you've seen everything that you need to see inside of that function and you want to exit it that is you will continue to execute everything but you don't want to see the rest of the execution manually you can click step out and it's going to execute the rest of that function without without you having to monitor it that is you will just go into the calling function that called it so we when we are back to get home and if I step out of get home again I will be back to the get data for home function and now I can continue my execution using the step over method and here is another function if I want to go into it I can use step into and it'll take me in there yeah there is some initialization so if you if you got any properties or objects that you're calling they will be initialized so just get ready for that but now we are in uh, arrange home screenshots and I can just step out again and go back to the function that called it so just click it like this and you have it here you're back in the calling function so I hope this is clear now when you're debugging you can see the value of any variable by just moving your mouse cursor over it so you can see var screenshot list has a count of 36 and if you expand it you can see all the properties and if there is any other value inside it like this is a collection of items you can see each item in that collection the other way to see this value to see these details is using the immediate window so you can open the immediate window if you've already got it uh, aligned somewhere you can click on it and if you don't have it yet if you want to find it you will find it in the debug area debug menu look for immediate or you can use the shortcut control alt i so i've got the immediate window over here and to see the value of any variable I can just copy that variable from here or type it type a question mark paste it there and then press enter and you will be able to see exactly the view that you uh, saw when you moved your mouse over it the immediate window can be very helpful sometimes because when you want to dig deeper and check for example one of the items in this collection you can do that in the immediate window and you can see exactly what the item item is what are all the properties and this way you can find a place to execute a command and see the result you can even execute code statements and functions for example if I wanted to see the count over here I could do that I could execute a method on this and see what it returns another interesting tool that you have is the locals window again you can find it in the debug menu which will give you all the different objects that you have in the current execution function so you've got activities object dashboard results projects list shots of screen and so on so you can see exactly what is right now the status of all of these variables and as I execute the function the variables will change according to their evolving values so for example I think on this particular line we are modifying the activities collection so you can see it's null right now and if I ch if I click on this line if I execute this line you can see that now the value has changed to the count 20 so we know now that the activities collection has 20 items and I can expand it to see each item in detail so this is another interesting place where you can find the information that can help you check your program and make sure it's bug free and then you also have the watch window 
where you can put in a variable and watch it. So if the variable's value changes, the execution will stop and you will be able to see what happens. So to add an item to watch, just click on add watch and you can do that directly from the locals window too. Let's go back to the locals window over here. You can add an item to watch just by clicking on right clicking it and then clicking on add watch. So now if the value changes, the item will be highlighted and the execution will stop. You can review the code. These were the basic concepts of debugging and testing your code while you debug it. And we've covered it for the WebAssembly project on the client side. So actually all of this work is being done on the browser. This is the way the app looks right now. And if you use the F12 key to load up the uh, dev tools, you can see that it is executing this code indeed on the browser. Now the connection of the browser and your Visual Studio is maintained by Visual Studio itself and the code is connect is converted to browser code and the code that you're writing is in C-sharp but in the browser it's executed using WebAssembly to make sure that the browser can understand C-sharp instead of JavaScript that you usually code your front-end in. So all of this front-end code is actually executing inside of your Chrome browser in this instance. Now this is not the, the server project. Like I said, a standard WebAssembly project will be divided into a client side and a server side project and you can debug both these projects at the same time. So if any code is calling the server side, you can debug the server side function too. And let us see an example of that. So in my get home function, I'm actually making a request to the server side to the record get home uh, controller method. I'm going to go into server, go into controller, go into record and put a breakpoint inside of get home. So let's find get home. Here we are and put a breakpoint right over here. Now I'm going to start the execution again. Here we go. I'm debugging the client side project right now. The get home function is in the client side code and I will step into it and get to the line where I will go to the server side code. Here we go. So this will actually go into the server side and if I step over it now, I see that I am now in the record controller and inside the get home method and my execution has stopped right on the line where I put the breakpoint on. You can do everything from one IDE, one solution. That is something I like about Blazor. You're gonna code the front end in C sharp and then you can code the back end in C sharp too and debug between the front end and the back end pretty much seamlessly. Now I want to tell you a few things, a few problems. When you debug the front end of the C sharp code, there are some limitations. You cannot do everything that you are used to doing in the backend project. The most important is edit and continue. Now Blazor is a relatively new technology and Microsoft is working to improve the experience and I'm sure it will be better as time goes by. But right now, the many of the things that you're used to just don't work. For example, if you modify any variable, the compiler will need to stop execution and then restart the execution which is going to take quite a while. So that is something you wouldn't have fun doing and debugging is actually a lot around that. So you're going to miss it. Now that wraps up our tutorial on debugging in Blazor WebAssembly. I hope it was useful for you. And if it was useful, don't forget to give me a like, hit that subscribe button and I will be back to you with more content, with more tutorials on C Sharp and other technologies. This is Kodajit, your best friend in programming, signing off.